In the name of the living God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. This Gospel reading from John is critical. It's chocked full of messages for us, for the liturgical year, for our call, for the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives. And as a matter of fact, on Pentecost Day, um, you'll hear this first section again, receive the Holy Spirit. That's what we'll hear again. So um, I'll get to preach this same sermon twice. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But it is sort of amazing. It is sort of amazing the way John plays it out. And so, so here it is. It's really two scenes, two scenes in this gospel. Scene one is this. It's um, the afternoon, the evening of the day of resurrection. And um, the disciples are scared. They fear the Jews. They probably fear the Romans. They fear everybody. And so they're locked in this upper room. And um, the risen Jesus Christ moves through that locked door into their presence and says, peace be with you. So that's, that's what we say in the Eucharist, because it's, a part, because it's in Scripture, because it's a part of the early Eucharist um, of, the, of the early Christians. Peace be with you. It's a sign of, hey, I love you. We say the peace of Christ be with you. I love you through Christ. Um, may, your, may your life be filled with, with peace and purpose. Peace be with you. And those ten, Thomas wasn't with them, those ten believed what they saw. They believed this was the risen Christ here with us. We thought he was dead. They said that he had risen from the dead and, and here he is with us. And so the risen Christ could see in their faces that they believed. That's all it took, that they believed. And so he said, receive the Holy Spirit, breathed on them like the beginning of all creation. And so he said, I'm going to send you out just like I have been sent. And you are to work for reconciliation and for justice and for equality. Now that you believe in the risen Christ and now that you have been empowered by the Holy Spirit. A powerful moment for those ten people. But not for Thomas, because he was doing something else. He wasn't present. With the excitement of those ten, after it all had happened, the next day or sometime other, they ran up to, uh, they ran up to Thomas. Well, they were gathered the next Sunday. Hey, it's just like this Sunday. It's a Sunday. It's a week after the day of the resurrection. And they gathered and they said, they said to Thomas, we've seen the Lord. We've seen the risen Christ. And Thomas says, I, I'm not there with you. I just, I, I just don't quite believe that yet. And quite frankly, until, until I can put my finger in the holes that the nails made in his hands, imagine that and put my hand in the side where water and blood flowed when he was stabbed with a spear as, he hung on, as Jesus Christ hung on the cross. I mean, until I do that, that's what he was asking. It's a gruesome thing. It's too much. It's over the top. But that's what Thomas said he needed in order to believe in the risen Christ. Okay. So there's that scene one. There's scene one. And um, you might ask, how did, those, how did those disciples get to that point? I mean, again, uh, they, could have, they could have been more like Thomas, but they weren't. How did they get that point? Well, it was all a matter of what we call now Christian education or adult formation. That is, um, you know, in my handout here, my handout that um, I didn't make an announcement about, but I want you to read it sometime. I want you to read a little piece of it with me right now. <coughs> Can you pull this out? And at the very top, at the very top, let's read this aloud together. Adult formation is learning about the faith and being formed by the triune God 
through study of religious sources, contemplative prayer, meaningful conversation, and precision in the life of a faith community. Here's a fascinating thing. So do you think those disciples went through that process? I do. I mean, think about it. Well, it wasn't a, for them it was not a triune God. These were faithful Jews who were followers of Jesus. Um, but they certainly studied religious sources. Again, they were faithful Jews. They worshiped. They knew the Hebrew Bible. And um, they knew Jesus. I tell you, Jesus is a religious source. Um, do you think that um, they participate in contemplative prayer? Well, right now and throughout the ages, there have been lots of methods of contemplative prayer that have been developed. I don't know whether they did those or not, but they definitely prayed. They definitely prayed. Jesus taught them how to pray. Did they have meaningful conversations? Sure. With Jesus, with each other. I'm sure with their families and their friends who wondered why in the world they were following this man around the countryside. And did they participate in the life of a faith community? Yeah, they participated in the, that faith community of those 12 that followed Jesus, but also still carrying on their Jewish faith. I mean, they were, there were lots of faith communities that they participated in. Okay, so the scene one the ten have seen the risen Christ and they believe, and we've got some idea how they moved up to that point of believing. Except for Thomas. And scene two is about Thomas. There they are now, eleven. Eleven in an upper room. The doors are closed. The risen Christ goes through the doors, is there with him. Peace be with you. And then he turns to Thomas. Thomas, come here. Put your hand in this hole in my hand. Put your finger in this hole in my hand. Put your hand in this slash in my body. Again, can you imagine that confrontation, that offer? And right at that moment, Thomas is standing right there, right at that moment. Something happened. I mean, maybe Thomas said, I've been so stupid. Or maybe he said, I can't do that. Or maybe he said, I don't have to do that. Or maybe he said, Jesus really loves me. Or maybe he said, I get it. Anyway, he did. He did get it. And not only did he say that he believed, but he said, my Lord and my God. The strongest statement of faith yet in the scriptures. My Lord, I'm going to follow you everywhere. My God, not the Son of God, but my God. Short and to the point. So let's come back to St. James again. All of us are on our own faith journeys. And you know what? Some of, them are, some of them are rather smooth and uh, uh, understandable. Uh, one thing after another. We Episcopalians we actually like to think we don't really have a road to Damascus moment, maybe, but it's sort of a gradual, uh, you know, going deeper and deeper into our faith journeys, maybe. But maybe some of us um, have really had dark nights of the soul or times when we just couldn't believe, or we really did feel abandoned by Jesus, by God, and we, and we almost give up. I mean, my point is this, is that our own spiritual journeys is in fact on our own. They are individual. But on this second Sunday of Easter, the message I hear is this. Wherever we are in that journey, that moving towards that moving towards full belief in Jesus Christ. Wherever we are in that journey, may we always have the faith to say, God, this is what I need from you in order to fully believe and to fully follow Jesus Christ. I need this thing from you. I doubt any of us will say the same thing that Thomas did. I know that some of us and maybe all of us would say something else because we all have needs in order to go deeper. The point is, that God can handle it. Doubting is not 
And it's not an example of lack of faith. It's not the opposite of faith. Doubting is an example of having questions and moving in a direction, naming that which stands before the goal and where we are. Doubting, in fact, is a good uh, spiritual journey process. So on this second Sunday of Easter, I encourage you to consider what's standing between you and a deeper understanding of the risen Christ in your life. The thing, the ultimate goal, the ultimate effect that this transition, this, this conversion, this deep, deep understanding of God in their lives, the, the ultimate effect was that these disciples, these disciples, when they fully believed that the risen Christ was with them, they then became empowered and could hear those words of Jesus Christ when he called them to go forth into all the world. Uh, to spread the gospel, to work for justice and peace, to make a difference in this world which was created by the God in whom we believe. So we are called to first be disciples, to listen to Jesus, to learn, and then to be apostles, to get out there and do something. And we hear that message over and over again. Throughout it all, we remember that God so loved the world. God so loved us. God can accept wherever we're coming from. And God is going to call all of us to move farther, to do the work, the reconciling work and ministry of Jesus Christ. God is with us. Amen.